Hey, thanks for, uh, thanks for hanging out with me again. I really do appreciate it. We're going to get to part two of the Slick Rock Trail Bypass. You're going to find out if my Land Cruiser finally met its match. The day after we ran this trail, this happened. It happens. I ran this trail for a couple of reasons. One, as I said, there is a campsite that is beautiful, that is very personal to me. I've got very fond memories and I wanted to know what the trail was like between me and one of my favorite campsites. But also, now more than ever, people are going out to the great outdoors to seek adventure. And I want to show you what a trail can be like. You guys err on the side of caution. It doesn't matter what type of vehicle you drive if you're overlanding, but it does matter where you drive it and you don't want to exceed the capabilities of your vehicle. So please be conservative, find out as much as you can about the trail and be safe. We all want to come back and we don't want to be spending a lot of money on broken parts. Now we're going to do a follow-up video where we look underneath my Land Cruiser and we look at the shape it's in after running the trail. All right, you guys, let's have some fun. Let's get out there on the trail and till next time, Outfit Explorer, let's go. All right, so good morning. Good morning. Um, so after the excitement yesterday, we got to this, uh, we got to this great location, and we didn't roll the camera uh, after that. It was, it was time for me to hang out with my friends. Mike's new nickname is uh, Indy because my 80 kicked up a. Uh, dang, the size of the rock was like the largest size rock I've seen move on the trail. It was, it was pretty large, and then, you know, word of caution, Mike had to dodge it things do happen but then we got here to base camp and we just spent the night just talking about life and 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 it wasn't about camera time so cameras off we're just hanging out and you guys need that if you don't know you need it you need that time especially in days like today and out here you guys can see it's one of the the easiest environments to socially distance you know you guys can stay apart you don't need to be near anybody and uh, you just hang out and you talk and you get that social outlet, a little peace of mind away from the crazy. So that's what we did last night. And now today, let's talk about today. Today, uh, we're going to continue down Slick Rock Trail. And we know the trail now. The trail before, it's a new bypass and we didn't know the trail as well. But now Nick has been on the trail. We're going to talk to him in a few minutes uh, once we get to some obstacles. And uh, we're, we're gonna see what the trail is like. Now trails like this change every single year. So we expect it to be a little bit easier than it was yesterday, but it changes every year. And the, and the one big obstacle that we have to do today is called the waterfall, AKA the staircase at the end of the trail. It changes and that's our biggest obstacle today. And it's a, it's a roll of the dice whether our vehicles get up the, um, uh, the, the waterfall. So we'll be sharing that with you today. And any learnings that we have, we're gonna pass that along so you guys can keep it in mind. All right, we're gonna wrap up here. We're gonna head on down the trail. down. This thing just truly impresses me, man. This 80. You know, old man emu lift, 35s, bumpers and sliders, and it's good. Talk to me, Goose. What are we doing? Uh, this is the off-camber section of Slick Rock. It used to be the very first obstacle on the trail. 
Uh, now it's not. Right. Uh, and now it actually doesn't feel like an obstacle much at all. Uh, but yeah, what you're gonna do here is just try and keep your tire up on this wall a little bit, try and keep you level. But uh, other than that, you know, it's just being calm on the throttle and keeping her straight through. Right on, let's right. go. Somebody put a rock on the trail. Yeah, you're just trying to find obstacles now. Just make sure you keep your drive shaft and your dip in that gap between the two rocks. That rock is new. This trail changes every year. I'm as long good. as it's over this side a little bit. So as long thinking. as I just keep my tire up against that wall, get in play. I can go straight through here. It's not even this an is... obstacle anymore. It's right. weird. It's gone. <laughs> it's never been like this. Somebody might disagree. This obstacle is gone, Mike. This yeah. used to be like one of the hardest parts of the trail. Yep. And it's, these boulders have moved. Yep, I see that. No, because that's when, so the, you see how my fenders are all busted up? Mm -hmm. You know, I got them basically duct tape, tape and bailing wire. Yeah. It's because I did a solo trip here, through here myself, and I spent 30 minutes trying to find a line. And then finally I was like, Fuck it. here I go. I have been here with groups and, of nine and had like three of the trucks were here stacking rocks because there's yep. just no way. They're, they're, there's no tires on the ground. They're, they're high, got their diff hung on this, the near, near the rear tires hung on the ground. They got yep. a slider up on a rock. It's like they, they're not moving. I am going to move that log though because I don't want that to puncture anything. Nick, I want to talk a little bit um, with you. You've been running this trail. You, this is like your old stomping grounds. You've been doing this yeah. for a long time. Um, tell us about the reality of your kit what you learned over the years and what you keep in your truck, just to give people an idea of the different perspective between daily driving and doing this kind of stuff. So yeah, I started running this trail with big groups of Tacomas um, back in early 2014. Uh, and I, I grew to love the trail. The thing with those big groups of Tacomas, we all have the same vehicle, but I got to see what broke on this trail. Yep. And the answer was drive shaft, tie rod, Thanks. CV axle. Every, like almost every trip with a group of eight or more, we had at least one of those break if not more or multiple of all. I have crazy stories of bringing drive shafts in and, and swapping things on the trail. Um, but that all taught me like, what do I need for this truck? And, and that combined with trips to SoCal doing fast stuff in the desert, I realized I needed spare spindles. So I have spare spindles, yep. also known as uh, knuckles. I have tie rods. I have a whole steering rack <laughs> in my truck, spare steering rack. I got spare wheel bearings already assembled. Um, I have a spare alternator, a spare power steering pump. I have a spare rear drive shaft, the whole thing. Uh, and then I have miscellaneous nuts and bolts of all sizes. Because yep. things go missing on the trail. I, I spent an hour looking for a bolt on a Rubicon for a leaf pack because we needed it. <laughs> yep. So, you know, it's just having extra spares of everything. Because on the trail here, there's no there's no one else coming. Yep. No AAA. Yep. You got to fix it and get it out. And I have fortunately, my truck has gotten out every time it's entered a trail. Maybe not with all the parts still on it, but it it's did drive out. out. <laughs> well, you mentioned your, you mentioned the steering rack and we went out, we were together yeah. um, on that trail and uh, you had, you coming up a, coming up out of a creek and one tire was pointed this way. Yeah. One point tire was pointed that way. And I was like, that ain't right. I broke the mounts off the steering rack that attach it to the frame. Right. <laughs> and I ratchet strapped it to the frame and bailing wired it with Dan. Yeah. And uh, I drove it all the way home. <laughs> <laughs> got you home. <laughs> it got me home. Right uh, but that actually wasn't the first time I broke a steering rack. I actually had blown a power steering, uh, the power steering seals. So it just completely lost power steering before. Mm -hmm. um, and then I shredded the teeth on one. So yeah. uh, I realized it was a failure part, it was a weak point in my steering. I actually went with a custom Tundra steering rack conversion. Uh, and now it's pretty beefy. I can't really break it, but now I've moved the failure point to tie rods. Right, exactly. So. And that's an important thing to say. What do you want to break? Where is the yeah. weak spot? You yeah. move it around a little bit. Yeah. Um, 
So you, did you mention your stick welding setup when we were going through all the parts? I do have a it. stick welding setup. Yeah. I really wanted a ready welder. I, I've yeah. been on eBay for like a year for what ready welder. I couldn't win one. I ended up buying a stick welding setup. I have a MIG welder at home. Yeah. I'm like an amateur MIG welder. Yeah. Um, stick welding's not going to be pretty, but it'll get the job. It, it'll hold things together, hopefully. Yeah, absolutely. Let, let's talk a little bit about the the spectrum of you know what you do. Um, but there's that difference between the forest road, right? that's fairly well maintained and this and one of the perspectives that you have to bring if you decide to come out to a beautiful location like this like you know the benefit of it is that here we are there's nobody around there's no one here there's no one we're here. the only ones on this yeah. trail today yeah so that's the benefit of, of of having a capable rig like this but if the more hardcore i'll advocate i think nick would advocate that getting out Finding some solace in the great outdoors is a really healthy thing for you. Um, I'd advocate to do it. But then if you're going to go this far off the grid and in this much solitude with nobody around, you, you need to know that things will break. And that's one of the big education points is it's not, it's not if I break something, it's I'm going to break something. I want to be as prepared as possible. It's all about research. Like yeah. go with someone who knows where you're going. Uh, or do a lot of research ahead of time. There's lots of books about trails in California and all over the country. Yep. And uh, know your vehicle. Know, like, go to common forums for your vehicle and find out what breaks. It'll be readily like posted there on any 4x4 site for your Ow. vehicle. These things are breaking on the trail. <laughs> and like, and just pick up a couple of them at O'Reilly's. Yep. It's not that expensive yeah, to buy fun. a remanufactured part at O'Reilly's. Maybe not something you'd want to run on your truck permanently, but yep. on the trail, it's a it's like a lifesaver. <laughs> right. No, absolutely. Better that than Better just than, being out yeah. here stuck. Yeah. Right. Uh, we both have uh, off grid comms, satellite comms. When we're out this far, yep. we can we can text two way comms. Um, and you'll notice I'm following Nick on this trail because Nick has run this trail way more times than I have. I've run it like maybe six yeah. or seven times you've run it just a, a lot countless. Lisa, Lisa and I this was our favorite spot in the summers yeah. to come yeah because we could always camp here there was always open camping yeah um, because we could just drive up here on a Friday afternoon get a beautiful spot by the water wheel the trail and we knew where we needed to work yep. at it when we needed to bring friends if we were gonna try something hard yep and uh we love this trail we would it's and it's close to my house this yep. is like one of the closest trails to my house yeah yeah So on some of those group Tacoma trips, we come from the other side. And when you're coming up, there's a huge boulder and a tight turn over here. And for whatever reason, the wheelbase of the Tacoma, you slap your drive shaft on it. I've done it. Uh, my wife has done it. And I've had a friend completely just twist one, broken completely apart. And we tugged him up to here and he spent the night here. This is drive shaft <laughs> camp spot. Yeah. And then with the next day we took off my friend Mike's drive shaft after he was done with the trail, drove it, my wife drove it in and <laughs> gave it to Blake. We put it on his truck and he drove out. Thumbs out, thumbs out on the wheel. Don't put your thumbs around the wheel. Unless you want to lose them. All right, so uh, something you learn on the trail. You guys see this button right here? So this, this shuts off all of my accessories in the truck. So when this gets pressed, boom, I'm back to stock wiring. None of my accessories work. Well, what I learned on this trail is that when you come down a hard trail and you slam, there's enough flex in the hood to throw the breaker because it pushes that button. So I'm gonna have to fix that. I was out there with my wire tester for about 10 minutes before I checked that. But that's what happened. The hood come down and just does that. So things you learn on the trail.
this is the really the final uh, difficult obstacle coming out of Slick Rock Trail in this direction. And uh, this is the one I was talking about uh, this morning. Um, lore has it that nobody has been up this trail for. Now we're just going to see how we're just going to see how it goes. Uh, I'm going to follow Nick's line and uh, see what happens. Oh, and then if if it, if this gets gnarly, because things shift around a little bit sometimes, it gets harder. This ends up being gnarly. We're just going to climb up this rock. There's a couple of ways out of here. If I can get real early, my rear tire up over here. That's the only way I ever make so it. So you got to get a rear tire up on that. If I don't get my rear tire up on that, I won't make it. You're good, Nick. Good job. Not pretty, but she bit eventually. Good job. It's your wheelbase, Mike. You're hitting both at the same time. It's just too much. Truth of the matter is I don't have the gearing. So I can, I got traction, I can put the pedal down, but it's not gonna lift me up over this rock. So I just don't have the gearing. Uh, Nick's gonna, I got a good line. Nick's gonna give me a little tug. We'll get up out of this hole. All right, I'm going. That's all we needed, Nick. I was barely pulling you. That was just a little tiny bit, Nick. Like you just gave me, I think if you, we could have breathed on the back of if the- If I pushed on it, I think, I think <laughs> you would have had it. Uh, yeah, so I just didn't get the gearing. You could see it from outside. You said I had three wheels of traction. Three wheels of traction. Yep. Three wheels of traction. I was using my lockers, but I put the pedal down and just didn't have the gearing or the power to get up over that rock just a little bit. Had a decent line. Yeah, if you re-geared your diffs or did your transfer case, I think either yep. one of those, just a little bit would have been enough. A little tiny bit. Yeah. All right, let's go have lunch. Yeah, I agree. All right. Cool. You can just take the lead bike.
So, uh, that was fun. It was. That was a good time. Yeah, after that initial new section, it was pretty much as expected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any uh, any time you, you come out of the trail, uh, driving on your own is a yeah. good day on the trail. Yep. <laughs> Hey, oh wait, there's more. I have some information for you guys, but first, uh, let me say thank you to Mike and Nick. I've known those guys for, for years. Nick, MadeMan925 on Instagram. Go and check him out. He has a passion for teaching as well, and he wants you to be safe. He's always glad to answer your questions about your rig or the trail. And Mike, awesome camera work. Thank you, I couldn't have done this. We couldn't have shared this to the community without your camera work. He is Social Pants on YouTube, so go and check him out now, that information for you. Uh, Overland Bound, we are a community of 25,000 adventure travelers. We're growing really, really quickly because you probably agree, adventure is necessary. We have a free app for you. It's called Overland Bound One, your one overland resource for everything. Community, locations, and trails, and events in your area. So download that app and it's free. If you want the trails, please consider becoming an Overland Bound member. We'd love to have you as a part of the crew. And if that weren't enough, Michael, wait, there's more. <laughs> you guys see things that we use on the trail, like the Gazelle tent, this trauma kit and the essentials. Since there are 25,000 Overland Bound members, we develop good friendships with folks who provide these products. And they say, hey, we'd like to have it in your store. And we say, great, cut a super good deal for our members. So if you are a member, you get great deals on this stuff. We just pass that along to you. So I hope that's useful. You guys, stay safe. I'm thinking about you. Thanks for hanging out with me. And until next time, hey, outfit, explore, and I hope to run into you guys on the trail. See you later.